another hello from West Virginia. Okay, I know you're ready for joke of the day, so let's get to it. So, I want to know, what's the hardest thing about learning to ride a bicycle? Well, it's the pavement. <laughs> these, are, these are awesome, aren't they? Okay, but the other thing that's awesome is being able to take what we've been learning about systems of linear equations into variables and being able to apply the ability to solve those systems of linear equations. We have our method of solving them by graphing, we have our method of solving them by substitution, and we have our method of solving them by elimination. But remember, all three of those methods are basically telling us if we were to take one of the equations and graph it and say it looks like this, and we were to take the other equation and graph it and say it looks like this, we are trying to find that point of intersection. Because remember, that point of intersection is the solution to both of those equations, the simultaneous solution to both of those equations. So let's now take a look at why are we learning to do this? What, where does this even matter? And I have two examples to show you. So in this first example, and you know that I've told you guys that whenever you solve word problems, you need to read it in its entirety one time just to get a feeling for what's happening. And then you need to break it down slowly, sentence by sentence. Just, just take your time with this. Most people, their mistakes are because they're just trying to rush through it. So just take your time with this. So what we have here is a farmer that has 2,500 acres of land. The farmer needs to plant two kinds of crops. One we're going to call crop A. Maybe it's asparagus. Maybe it's um, artichokes. Not artichokes. I don't know. It doesn't matter what the crop is. But crop A sells for $230 per acre. Now, the farmer's going to plant a second crop. We're going to call it crop B. Maybe it's broccoli. Maybe it's Brussels sprouts. I don't know. Maybe it's carrots. But it's crop B. This crop sells for $280 per acre. Now, this farmer wants to receive $625,000 from the sale of the crops. So the farmer needs to determine how many acres of each crop to plant in order to do two things. One, maximize the space he or she has, and two, to maximize the amount of money that he or she wants to bring in. So we've read it in its entirety. We've got a feeling for what's happening. And yes, we have two criteria that we need to be met. So let's kind of start there, write this down. We have criteria one, and criteria one is going to be this idea of the acreage. So let's go with the acreage concept here. 2,500 acres of land to plant. We have two types of crops that we're gonna be planting in this, crop A and crop B. Now, does it say how many acres of crop A are gonna be planted? No. Nope. Does it say how many acres of crop B are going to be planted? Nope. Matter of fact, that's the question. How many acres of each crop are going to be planted? Now, the next question is this. Do crop A and crop B have any kind of relationship? In other words, like is crop A three times as much as crop B? Or is three, crop B um, four times as much? Or do I add a certain amount to crop B to make crop A? Or anything like this happening? No, there is nothing said about that at all. The only thing that we know about these two crops is the amount of money that's made off of them and the fact that when we plant them, we've got 2,500 acres to use. So let's go with this. I need to figure out how many acres of crop A and how many acres of crop B are going to be planted so that when I add them together, I come up with 2,500 acres of land. And that is the criteria for the acreage. Let, let me step back here and let's just call this the acreage. Now, we've got two variables in here. So we need to define what those variables represent so that we don't confuse ourselves. Let's let A represent the acres of crop A. So let's slide this over here now. Let's clean this up a little bit. And I'm gonna let A equal the number of acres of crop A, and I'm going to let B equal the number of acres of crop B. So like I said, I'm going to take the acreage for crop A, I'm going to take the acreage for crop B, I'm going to add the two together. When I do, I better get 2,500 acres total for the crops. Now remember there was a second criteria in there. That second criteria was the money because it's all about the money. I mean, hey, that's why we're in business is to make money. Now the money concept here, remember, 
The farmer wants to make $625,000. How is the farmer going to make that? By selling crop A and selling crop B. Now remember, crop A sells for $230 per acre. So if that's the case, then how much money is the farmer going to make off of crop A? Well, it depends on how many acres are sold. So if one acre is sold, $230. If two acres is sold, well, that's another $230. So 230 plus 230. If three acres sold, that's another 230. So 230 plus 230 plus 230. What about four acres? 230, 230, 230, 230. What would be faster than adding up 230 every single time? Because what if the, what if the farmer's going to sell like, you know, 2,000 acres of crop A. I don't want to go 230, 230, 230, 2,000 times. I don't want to do that. What would be faster? Yes, multiplying the acreage to the amount. Now, how many acres of crop A? Remember, we don't know. We said let's let A represent the acreage for crop A. So what's going to happen then is we're going to multiply the $230 to the A, and that will give us the money that is being brought in on crop A. So if that's the case, then what's going to happen with crop B? Yeah, take a look here. Crop B sells for $280 an acre. So once again, the fastest thing to do would be to multiply 280 times the number of acres for crop B. How many acres for crop B? Again, we don't know. We called it this right here. But what we do know is we're going to take that 280, we're going to multiply it to B. That's the amount of money that's being brought in off of crop A. So here's all the money being brought in off of crop A. I'm sorry, crop B. Here's all the money being brought in off of crop A. Here's all the money being brought in off of crop B. What's going to happen to these two piles of money? Yes, we're putting them together. Now, how do you represent that you're putting them together? Absolutely. We're going to add them up. And when we do, how much does the farmer want to make? Yes, $625,000 is what, wants to be, what the farmer wants to make. So now then, and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. We're scrunching it up here. So here is the criteria that needs to happen, the acreage and the money. But notice what we have here is a system of equations. And so now you know why we need the ability to be able to solve a system of equations. So we've got three, three methods to choose from. We can graph each one of these, but frankly, nobody wants to do that because we've got two shortcut methods. We can use the method of substitution or we can use the method of elimination. I'm going to go with the method of elimination here because all I have to do is multiply this top one by a coefficient that will create an opposite either here or here. So I'm going to go with that. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this top equation. Me, I'm going to try to get an opposite here on A. So I'm going to multiply it by a negative 230 in order to get things to cancel out. So when I multiply that top equation by negative 230, I get a negative 230A minus 230B. 2,500 times 230 is 575,000. Now notice this is positive times negative, so it's going to be a negative 575,000. And now I'm going to carry this equation down below it. And remember, with the method of elimination, also called method of addition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the two equations up. So when I take this negative 575,000 and add it to the 625,000, I'm going to get 50,000 and a positive 50,000. And notice that these two will cancel when I add. And a negative 230 plus 20, 280 is going to be a 50. So I have a 50B equals 50,000. And then when I divide through by 50, 50,000 divided by 50 is going to be 1,000. So that means, now remember, this is a real world situation. I need to include my units so that two reasons. One, so that the reader knows that this is going to be 1,000 what? 1,000 acres. But more importantly, so that the reader knows that I know that it's going to be 1,000 acres. It's not 1,000 of whatever that crop is. It's not $1,000. It's 1,000 acres. Very important that the reader knows that you know. You're smart. Show how smart you are. Put your units in there. Now, we need both crops, though. We need crop B, B as well as crop A. How do we figure out crop A? 
Well, remember, I'm going to add the two up to be $2,500. So that means that whatever I add to a thousand, in other words, take that thousand, put it right up in here. When I do, I will get a plus a thousand equals 2,500. And when I subtract a thousand from both sides, then that will lead me to a being 1,500. And so we're going to have 1,500 acres of crop A. And you know that you do need to check this in both equations. And when you check it in the top equation, 1,500 plus 1,000, does that give you 2,500? Absolutely. When you take 230 and multiply it to 1,500, uh, 1,500 times 230 is 345,000. And then, uh, let me write that down, 345,000, I'll go ahead and put that right here. And then when I multiply 280 times 1,000, well that's pretty easy, that's going to be 280,000. Now when I add those two up, do I get 625,000? And in fact, I definitely do. So I know, yes, this is the correct answer. Okay, let's try another example. You know I like for you guys to get lots of examples so that you see, um, you feel very comfortable with the concepts that you're learning. So once again, we have a word problem here, and we know that with word problems, we're going to read it in its entirety just to get a feeling for what's happening, and then we're going to break it down slowly, sentence by sentence. So this one says that we have a trucking company that needs to move 21 tons of gravel. We have eight qualified drivers in the company and two types of trucks to use. One type of truck can haul five tons. The other type can haul three tons. But we have an insurance requirement that specifies that the five ton trucks must have two drivers in the cab during the operation. But the three ton trucks only need one driver in the cab during operation. We want to know how many of each type of truck do we need to use in order to move that 21 tons of gravel, here's the key, in one trip. And we want to use all the drivers that we've got. So we've read it in its entirety, we've got a feeling for what's happening, and we know that we have two criteria, again, that need to be met. One criteria is the amount of gravel that's being moved. That's one criteria, is the gravel. The second criteria, is going to be the insurance requirement with the drivers. So we've read it in its entirety. Here's the feeling for what's happening. So let's take a look at this gravel concept. Notice that we want to move a total of 21 tons of gravel. Notice as well that we've got two types of trucks that we can use. One type, remember, hauls five tons. The other type hauls three tons. Now, the catch is, do we know, we know that we want to pull all the tonnage together, and so we know that we've got a certain number of five-ton trucks to use, we've got a certain number of three-ton trucks to use, and we want to haul all 21 tons at the same time. So I need to figure out, okay, how many five-ton trucks am I going to use? Well, and, and notice that's, that's the question here. So do we know how many five-ton trucks we're going to use? No, and in fact, like I said, that's what's being asked here, how many of each type. So, now remember, if I take one five-ton truck, it's going to take five tons. If I take a second five-ton truck, that's another five tons. If I take a third five-ton truck, that's another five tons. And like we said before, rather than repeatedly adding five tons, five tons, five tons, five tons, what would be faster? Yes, multiplying the number of trucks by five tons to meet our gravel requirement. So, we don't know how many five-ton trucks, let's use a variable for that. I'm going to go with, I'm going to let F equal the number of five-ton trucks, simply because F sounds like five. I like to make things simple. But I know that each and every one of these trucks is going to haul five tons, so to figure out the amount of tonnage that's going to come with those trucks, then that's going to be five times the F. So I've got five times the F, and that's the amount of tonnage that's going to go out with those trucks. But I have a second type of truck, that three-ton truck. Do we know how many of those we're going to use? No. And in fact, there's not, that's the question that we're being asked, how many of each type of truck. Now, is there a relationship between the five-ton trucks and the three-ton trucks? Like, there are one more of the three-ton trucks that are going to be used, or there's 
four times as many of the five ton trucks are going to be used. Is there any kind of criteria like that that's being stated? No, there's no relationship that we're aware of for those two types of trucks. So therefore, we're going to use two different variables. And so F is going to be the five ton trucks. And again, I like to make things simple. I'm going to let T equal the number of three ton trucks because T for three. And what I know is the first one of those that goes out takes three tons. The next one, three tons. The next one, three tons. Three tons. And like we said before, rather than repeatedly adding three, it's much faster to multiply by three. So I'm going to take the number of trucks, T, and I'm going to multiply it by three. So we have the amount of tonnage that's going out in these trucks, the amount of tonnage that's going out in these trucks, they're all going together. What do we want to happen? Yes, we want to put the two together. Putting together indicates addition. And when we add it all together, we want it to be, that's what equals means, we want it to be how much? Yes, we want it to be 21 tons. So here is meeting the gravel, the tonnage requirement. Now let's go with this insurance requirement with the drivers. So remember, it says that those five ton trucks, they need to have two drivers. So, for each and every truck that goes out, the first one goes out two drivers, next one two drivers, next one two drivers, next one two drivers. So, rather than, again, repeatedly going two plus two plus two plus two, what's faster? Yes, multiplying by two. Two times the number of those trucks that are going out. And again, do we know how many of those trucks are going out? No, we don't. So, we called it an F. But we know that in each of those five ton trucks, they're taking two drivers. So the total number of drivers that are going out in those trucks is going to be two times the F. And that will take care of the insurance requirement for the five ton trucks. Now, let's think about these three ton trucks. Remember, they only require one driver. So now then, three ton, one driver, three ton, one driver, three ton, one driver. And again, rather than repeatedly going one, 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 we're going to multiply. So we're going to say, well, but we're multiplying by a one. One times the number of trucks will be a 1t, and you know that when you multiply by 1, you don't have to show that. So really, rather than it looking like an it, <laughs> I'm just going to make it a t. But again, here's all the drivers that are going out with those 5-ton trucks. Here's all the drivers that are going out with the 3-ton trucks. What do we want to happen with these two sets of drivers? we are putting them together. And once again, putting together means add. And when we add them all up, how many drivers do we have to use? We have eight drivers at our disposal, and that's all the drivers that we have. So, we're meeting our criteria of gravel, we're meeting our criteria of drivers, and here again we have a system of equations. And that, once again, we can see why we need the ability to solve systems. Now, once again, we've got three methods to do it. We can graph them, but nobody wants to do that because we have two other shortcut methods. We've got substitution, and we've got elimination. Now, elimination will work per perfectly fine in this one because I could easily multiply this by a negative 3 to cancel these out. But I'm going to go with the method of substitution just to get us practice into one of those other methods. Plus, remember, with the method of substitution, I'm going to substitute one of the equations into the other equation, and it doesn't matter which equation you choose to substitute in the other. And remember, it doesn't matter which variable you choose to get by itself. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the bottom equation and I'm going to rearrange it and I'm going to get this t by itself. Because all I have to do to get that t by itself is subtract this 2f off. Very easy to do, leaving me with t equals 8 minus 2f. And the nice thing about this is that means wherever I see a T, I'm going to plug this in its place. So I'm going to plug this. Remember, always plug into the other equation, always into the other one. Never plug into the one you just rearranged, because if you plug back into this one, you are creating the same line every single time. So when I plug it into this one, it was 3 times T. Now it's going to be 3 times all of this. So what I now have then is a 5f plus 3, and remember it was 3 times t, now it's 3 times all this, and to remind myself it's times all of that, I'm going to use a parenthesis to remind myself that it's not just 3 times the 8, not just 3 times the two, negative 2f, but 3 times all of it. And now we have an equation that has one variable in it that's easy to solve. You know where to go from here. 
I'm going to distribute that 3 through, and when I do, I get 24 minus 6f, and I'm going to combine up my like terms. 5f minus 6f is a negative f, so I have a negative f plus 24 equals 21. I'm going to subtract that 24 from both sides, and when I do, I get a negative f equal to a negative 3, and remember at this point I'm either going to multiply both sides by a negative or divide both sides by a negative. Either way, I'm changing signs. So my f is going to be 3. And remember, because this is a real world situation, I need those units. 3 what? Well remember, this is where it's important to define your variable in case you're not sure. f stood for 5 ton trucks. So it's going to be 3 of those 5 ton trucks. But remember, I also need to figure out how many of the three ton trucks I'm going to use. So I need to go back and I need to say, okay, well, if the F was three, I can plug it in here, I can plug it in here, or that right there for that matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you plug it. So I'm going to take my three, I'm going to put it right into this one. When I do, I will now have two times the F, or in other words, two times three, plus the T equals eight. Two times three is six. 6 plus t equals 8, which means I need to subtract 6 from both sides, and when I do, that means my t is going to be 2. And so again, what does that mean? t stood for 3 ton trucks. So I need 2 of the 3 ton trucks. So now, remember, we need to check this in both equations to make sure that we do have it right. It needs to be a solution to the system. That means it needs to be a solution to both equations, not just one of them. So if we check out the gravel idea, if I have three of those five ton trucks, three times five is 15, they're hauling away 15 tons of gravel. If I have two of the three ton trucks, two times three is six, so they're hauling away six tons of gravel, so 15 tons and six tons, yes, that is 21 tons of gravel. So we've met the criteria for gravel. Now let's check the drivers. Two drivers for each of the five ton trucks, so two times three is six, six drivers there. Each of the three ton trucks only needs one driver, so that's two drivers here. Six drivers and two drivers, yes, gives me eight drivers. I've met the criteria of the drivers. So I've met both criteria. I know that this is the correct solution to the system. So hopefully you're seeing that there are tons of applications for systems of equations. Matter of fact, solving basic equations and solving systems of equations and solving inequalities, these have the most applications to them in all the math that you look at. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.